Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you this week. I'm getting the chart into the den now. Let's take a look. We have the ES Mini trading about 43.87. We uh, had some big movement to the upside today, uh, topping out about uh, 12.30 in the afternoon, and we are on the retreat back down. We'll see how that shakes out by the end of it. Um, we got up to 44.23, uh, trading at 43.87 currently. Uh, the Russell Futures trading at seven, uh, 1,778, 1,778. Um, again, big movement, not as much as a crawlback as the ES Mini did, uh, but a crawlback regardless uh, from its highest of, uh, point of the day. And Q's trading at 1,595, same kind of motion we're seeing. And we'll see it again with the Dow as well. And we're getting back to the uh, open we are moving back towards there. So we'll see how we shake out today. Um, might be kind of closing a little bit low today, but we will see how that goes out. Gold kind of staying sideways here at 19.35 and 70 cents. Silver at $23. We have copper at $3 and 57 cents. And then light street crude, not moving too much. We're at 86.95. Some big volume on the up about uh, maybe half an hour ago. And then the Brent trading at about 90 bucks. The dollar still sticking at 106.20. Any movement down from here is going to be really positive for the rest of the market. Um, so we'll have to see, again, how that shakes out as well. QQQ trading at 367. Google, 140. Meta, we're at 322. Disney, 8570. Apple, we'll talk a little bit about them today. They're losing some market dominance in China. Uh, iPhone 15 sales have not been so good over there. We had Tim Cook. Uh, visit uh, China in the midst of all of this. And let's buy it for 35. We take a look at Nvidia. They are down a little bit, about 23 percent, or excuse me, 23 points right now, about five percent. Uh, so, what essentially happened is the U.S. is enforcing new trade restrictions with China, regarding China's ability to get more uh, cutting-edge chips. Uh, the new restrictions are designed to close loopholes on export controls announced a year ago. Uh, the current administration said it is seeking to prevent China's military from importing advanced semiconductors and chip manufacturing equipment. Tighter controls will target NVIDIA's A800 and H800 chips, uh, which the company created for the Chinese market after the initial U.S. trade restrictions last October. Uh, these chips are less capable than NVIDIA's top-of-the-line graphics processors, uh, for artificial intelligence. Earlier trade restrictions prevented semiconductor uh, supplier ASML. They do all the lithography um, from selling its advanced lithography gear to China. Uh, that would allow China to develop these chips over there. And then uh, you know, let's take a look at AMD real quick here. So NVIDIA's primed and why they're so strong is because their chips are used to train the new models, but AMD's chips can be used to just kind of maintain them. Down marginally uh, on the daily. I'm going to pull this out to yearly. And we have 132 at the high here. And we uh, had a steady decline to pump up into 100 on a not significant volume and trading in this range really of 110 to 100. Um, you know, again, the idea if like NVIDIA gets hit very hard on this. It's two ways to look at this, right? Like, NVIDIA, again, is, has very, very cutting-edge semiconductors, right? And processors and all of this. That, like I said, is being used to train these models, whereas AMD just is used uh, in order to support them, if that makes sense. So NVIDIA obviously can get hit pretty hard, right? If you're cutting state-of-the-art kind of training chips, NVIDIA gets hit hard on that. If you're cutting all kind of chips going, uh, NVIDIA obviously get hit gets hit hard, but then AMD gets hit hard as well. Um, not a lot of action with this stock. Um, obviously, you have some pretty intense movements up, down from a low in September, uh, about 94, 12. Low of the year is trading about $80, $79 around here. Um, but again, no, no substantial volume. I, I think really the, the person, the entity that got the most uh, fame out of this whole AI kind of uh, rush would have been NVIDIA. So, yeah, it's something to take a look at regarding that. NVIDIA is still obviously pretty strong. I mean, a 5% decrease um, after its pump up in about May 
is uh, not, you know, anything bad unless you're like buying at these higher levels. Um, but, you know, if you've been holding prior to that, uh, you're still sitting pretty and you can probably absorb some losses like this. Um, so that's what's going on in the chip sector. Uh, we talked a little bit about retail sales. Um, did very well in September. There's no consumer slowdown in sight, according to it. Obviously, um, that is not what the Fed has been wanting. Um, but yet the uh, consumer persists. The retail sales rose about 0.7% in October, uh, excuse me, in September from the previous month. Uh, more than double the Wall Street estimates for a 0.3% growth. Sales, excluding auto and gas, increased 0.6% above estimates for a 0.1% increase. Uh, and that was compiled by Bloomberg. Uh, the August sales were revised up to 0.8% from previously reported 0.6%. Uh, so this obviously gives a snapshot in consumer spending at a time when economic data has been coming in largely stronger than expected despite the Federal Reserve's interest rate hiking campaign uh, as the central bank seeks to cool inflation. And things really are still getting expensive. So I'm curious to see where this spending is coming from. And, and I, would, I would reckon, you know, a lot of this more than people would be comfortable with is coming from essentially credit. And uh, so I'd be interested to see kind of that report. Uh, Jamie Dimon on Friday uh, noted that the consumers and businesses are generally remaining healthy. Uh, their cash buffers are being spent down. That's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, the Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan described the state of the U.S. economy as one in which the consumer is still spending ahead of last year, but is continuing to slow. And that is uh, true with Bank of America as well. They, they popped up about 10%, um, but they are warning of a slowing spending by Americans. Uh, the Charlotte NC Bank earned a profit of about $7.8 billion, or $0.90 cents a share, um, which is $0.13 cents better than Wall Street had expected, according to a survey of analysts. Uh, it also tops last year's $7.1 billion in profit. Uh, most of the higher profits came from higher interest rates on loans, of course, uh, with net interest coming in about uh, $14.4 billion, compared with about $13.76 billion last year. Give me a second here. My computer all caught up. Okay. Take a look here. Oh, and we got the break. Well, when we get back, folks, talk just a little bit more about Bank of America and the banks in general. We have Basil and we have Tim Ord on today, which is fantastic. So, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.